Nancy? Mike? Yeah, hi. You're a kid. No, I'm a, I'm a grown man. You're so skinny. <coughs> Do they feed you? <coughs> Here, have a great. Thank you. Why don't you tell me your story? <laughs> it started uh, two years ago. I was a stay-at-home mom to my son, Freddie. And one day we were at Little League. Freddie was five. He really hated that he couldn't play with the older kids. It was the third inning, and I got a phone call. My husband had been in a car accident, and he was gone. Just like that. I I'm so sorry. I did the best I could. I got myself a job as a secretary at Devlin McGregor, and I even got promoted to secretary of the president, Charles Hunt. And that's when it all changed. It's OK. You tell me what happened. He started asking me to stay late, ordering dinners together, stuff like that. One night, he says that if I sleep with him, he's going to take care of me in the firm. And if I don't, he's going to fire me. So what did you do? I went to Human Resources. They said they investigated, couldn't find anything to support my claim. Two months later, I was fired for poor job performance. They wouldn't let me say goodbye to anybody. They wouldn't write me a letter of recommendation. I wasn't looking for a payoff. All I wanted was for it to stop. Can you help me? Uh, yes. Yes, I can. Your Honor, this case should be thrown out. Other than her story, the plaintiff doesn't have one piece of evidence. Because the evidence lies within their personnel files, which they're conveniently refusing to hand over. Those files contain sensitive information. He's fishing at the expense of our employees' right to privacy. Please. You don't give a rat's ass about his employees' right to privacy. Sorry, that's actually unfair to rat's asses. Your Honor, Mr. Spector's claim that we don't care about our employees, though belittling, doesn't carry any weight as a rule of law. True, but what does carry weight is that an investigation of sexual harassment must be conducted without any duress. Your point? The investigator and every person being interviewed answers to the CEO they're investigating. That is the definition of duress. It'd be as if your bailiff accused you of sexual harassment and you assigned your stenographer to investigate. Now, how likely would it be that this investigation yielded any fruit? You honestly think I would harass Herman? Well, I don't know, Your Honor. Some people have a thing for the uniform. Uh, I'd like to think Herman would come to me before it even got to an investigation. I saw that. That should be stricken. Well, what if Herman did come to you, Your Honor, and you betrayed his trust by firing him under false pretenses? You really think that little of me? I wouldn't trust you as far as I can throw you, Your Honor. Hand over the files oh. today. That's it. They're trying to bury you in paperwork. Well, they picked the wrong guy. If they didn't, I did. Get it done by the end of the week. I got to run and try my new client. <sighs> I know where they don't want us to look. Did you get through all those files in one night? Well, I would have done it faster, but I ordered a pizza. Speaking of which, have you ever had the cheese in the crust? Because it blew my mind. What'd you find? There was a dismissal on March 12th, 2005, but the file with the employee name on it is missing. It's our woman. I know it is. I'm moving to slap sanctions on their attorney, possible jail time. The guy's not going to know what hit him. Dennis. Harvey Specter, did you have anything to do with the March 12th, 2005 <laughs> files left out of discovery? If they're here by noon, I'll believe you. If not, we're filing for sanctions. Threat of sanctions is better than filing for sanctions. That's what I meant. Threaten, not file. Who would mean that? Shave. Mr. Ross, what happened to me happened six years ago. It was horrible, and there was a reason I didn't do anything about it. They'll put me on that stand and attack me, and I don't want that. Ms. Webster, Joanna, <laughs> this man is a predator. And if you don't help stop him, he will do it again. <laughs> All you have to do is give a deposition. I'm sorry. I can't do it. What happened with the witness? Uh, 
I failed. To not be awesome. I got her to testify. You should have seen me. I, I tried everything. He'd do it again. You know, I'd be with her every step of the way. Nothing worked. And then it hit me. I asked her, what if it was her daughter that he did this to? She melted. Oh, and you know how I came up with that little gem? I cared about her. <sighs> oh. <sighs> yeah. Thank you. I'm glad to see that staying up all night doesn't make you act like a complete idiot. Now go home and get some sleep. I don't want you waving that thing around during tomorrow's deposition. Ms. Webster, would you say that you're a truthful person? Yes. Yeah. So when you said earlier that you had never been arrested for a crime, you were, uh, you were speaking the truth. Yes. Yes. So in 1993, then, you were not arrested for stealing $1,000 worth of jewelry from the Willow Grove Mall in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> I was 17. That, that was one mistake. Those records were supposed to be sealed. Oh, so when you say those records were sealed, what you mean to say is you, you thought you could get away with a lie. No, that's not it. You're making it seem different than it is. I'm sorry. You, you were arrested in your past, and you lied about it here under oath. Is that making it seem different than what it is? No answer. Mm. All right. Um, let me ask you this. Since you've lied here once, what's to make us believe you're not lying about Mr. Hunt? What he did to me didn't happen. Look, it doesn't matter, all right? I just, I, I need you to testify on Friday and keep this case alive. We don't have time to find anyone else before. Would you please wait? No, I'm not waiting. You promised this wouldn't happen, and it did. You never told me you were arrested. Don't contact me again, please. What happened with the witness? Nothing. Nothing happened. I couldn't fix it. So you're gonna quit? <laughs> it's either that or have Lewis Lip fire me. What are you talking about? My first day, Lewis fired Gary Lipsky for screwing up a case. He said if I did the same thing, I'd be gone just as fast. Well, you go back to the witness's house and you get her to testify again. I tried. There's no way. There's always a way. Then why don't you go and convince her? Because you screwed it up. Oh, and you don't give a damn about the client, right? It's not my job. Does your job include giving a damn about me? Because the least you could do is offer to stand up to Lewis for me. Stand up for you? I put my ass on the line for you. But it turns out you may have had the balls to get this job, but you don't have the courage to stick it out when it gets tough. That's not true. Isn't it? You've had one foot out the door since you got here. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that briefcase being locked in your desk. Yeah, I saw it, and I know what it is. It's your backup plan in case this doesn't work out. You can make some quick cash and go right back to the life you told me you didn't want to lead. So if you want to quit, go ahead. But this isn't because of Lewis, and it isn't because of me. It's because you're afraid you might have to admit that you're not as smart as you think you are. If you're here in the morning, I'll know I still have an associate. You can save your breath. There's no way I'm testifying at the hearing tomorrow. That's not why I'm here. I know what you did. What are you talking about? You never worked for Devlin McGregor. And you were never harassed by Mr. Hunt. That's a lot. Look, I could tell you that I've got the canceled checks or the wire transfer or whatever smoking gun that exists. I don't. But I will, and when I do, you'll be going to jail, unless you tell me what happened right now. I'm the guy you tell. All I had to do was waste your time until tomorrow, after the hearing. Please, I just needed the money. I don't want to go to jail. Here's what you're going to do. She came to work today. Nice suit. It was a barter transaction. I got six of them for one little briefcase. 
Listen, uh, I'm sorry, and... Forget it. When I first started, Jessica wrote me so hard, I quit once a month. I just told you what you needed to hear. <laughs> That's just it. I've only ever had one person who told me what I needed to hear. Maybe it's time I started trusting somebody else. Merry Christmas. Is this for real? You know what to do. Press until it hurts. Harassment is a civil violation. The penalty is money, but witness tampering, that's a crime. And you will go to prison, where I guarantee you'll learn more about unwanted sexual advances than you can possibly imagine. Do you think this is going to intimidate me? Even if this evidence was credible, who are you going to get to prosecute a small-time witness tampering charge, huh? Harvey, didn't you graduate law school with the current U.S. attorney in New York? In fact, I did. And I think he might even be interested in pursuing a case like this. Wait, are you two still clubs? Well, I was the best man at his wedding. Wow. No, you weren't. You're bluffing. No. I think I've got some pictures of us at the ceremony. Let's see. Yeah, here we are. Must admit, I, I look very dashing. This is me and his mother. The woman adores me. Here we are at his bachelor party. There's no strippers. He's lame. But he can't put guys like you away for sexual harassment and then go to strip clubs now, can he? All right, what do you want? An admission of guilt and a guarantee that you'll obtain treatment before working again. And Nancy gets reinstated with back pay. Fine. And a raise. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Are we done? The kid should be able to grow up without the burden of tuition hanging over his head, don't you think? Which is why you're also gonna pay Nancy an extra $250,000. Charles. Gentlemen. So just one question. Why'd you go to Joanna's house? Because I figured it out. <laughs> I object. I think you did it because you care. I did it because it's my job. Do you admit it? You care about me. I saw you smile when I showed up for work this morning. I didn't smile. I was thinking of a funny joke. Look, we start on this tomorrow. Does this mean we're officially a team now? I wouldn't move your things in a way matter used to you. So now you're Batman. Closer to him than Clemenza. Oh, yeah, Kilmer. Clooney. Keaton. Did you really quit when you first started? Of course not. I'm not a wuss. <laughs>